South China Morning Post, 28th of February 2023. Chinese sponsored US importers and drop shippers demand the return of billion dollar tariffs imposed by Trump on Chinese products. China has used drop shippers to sell its products all over the globe. This coercive tactic employed by the Chinese has been devastated by Trump's tariffs. China is going to suffer to convince American producers, retailers, and customers to support his higher tariffs on Chinese imports, then US President Donald Trump used the slogan in 2018. Since President Joseph Biden took office in January 2021, most of the Trump administration's tariffs have remained in place. Five years later, thousands of angry American importers and drop shippers are suing for billions of dollars worth of compensation in a U.S. court. These companies claim that before imposing additional duties varying from 7.5 to 25 percent on Chinese goods worth 300 billion U.S. dollars, the U.S. government improperly disregarded public comments, failed to consider the adverse effects on the American economy, and gave American defense priority. Have you considered any of these remarks? An attorney for the plaintiffs questioned the defendants during a hearing this month at the U.S. Court of International Trade in New York. Did you come to some fraction of independent judgment that these tariffs were appropriate in light of the devastating economic harms predicted by the most prominent industry organizations and consumer organizations in the United States? The attorney responded to the Office of the United States Trade Representatives USTR, claim that it had been carrying out the president's directives by saying, the president could have ordered 500% duties on 100% of China commerce. The Biden administration has been considering a partial tariff lift to combat inflation and lower consumer costs, but doing so could be political suicide for the Democrats. Through 2019, tariffs had caused a total loss of 16 billion US dollars annually to the US economy, including losses to firms and consumers, according to research by economist Pablo Fage Gelbaum of the University of California, Los Angeles. US tariffs continue to be almost entirely borne by US firms and consumers, according to a different report co-authored by Maria Media of the New York Federal Reserve Bank. Trump declared four tiers of tariffs against China through his protectionist America First policy. Section 301 of the Trade Act of 1974 permits the president to take retaliatory action to pressure foreign nations to stop engaging in unfair trade practices. The choice was made in response to a 2017 USTR probe that accused China of engaging in unfair trade practices that cost U.S. businesses an estimated $50 billion. Chinese goods worth $50 billion U.S. dollars were subject to the first two sets of extra 25% taxes, commonly referred to as List 1 and List 2, in July and August 2018. In the following months, List 4A which imposes an additional 7.5% duty on Chinese imports worth 120 billion US dollars was declared by Trump in 2019. List 4A, which sets another 7.5% duty on Chinese imports worth 120 billion US dollars was announced by Trump in 2019. Trump also added a 10% tax on an additional 200 billion dollars worth of List 3 Chinese products. Later, this was increased to 25%. HMTX Industries, an international producer of vinyl tiles with headquarters in Connecticut, initially brought the case in September 2020. It questioned whether the USTR had the right to impose tariffs on Chinese goods outside of lists 1 and 2 and whether it had complied with the Administrative Procedure Act, which requires federal agencies to consult the public before making decisions by publishing notices of proposals and soliciting feedback. Within a few months, the case was revised to incorporate more than 3,000 related cases brought by other American importers, and it was assigned to a three-judge panel. At this point, there are more than 6,000 lawsuit drop shippers. The court granted the opposition to the tariffs a partial win in April 2022. Although it denied the argument that the USTR exceeded its legal bounds in imposing the duties, it did order the federal organization to justify how it assessed the feedback received in response to the original proposal to set the third and fourth rounds of tariffs. In a 90-page response in August, the USTR claimed that because Trump had requested it to identify $300 billion US dollars in annual trade to punish China, it could not exclude the vast majority of products listed by commenters. Additionally, it stated that consideration was given to comments regarding the rate at which tariffs would be imposed, given the president's directives. According to experts following the case, a final decision could be made in 2023, but neither side will agree to a settlement without first appealing to a higher federal court. 
The proceedings have also focused on the age-old debate over whether the Trade Act of 1974 gives the executive branch too much power to protect the United States from the most significant threat of our time, China. Nicole Bivens Collinson, who leads the international trade and government relations practice at Sandler, Travis, and Rosenberg, a Washington-based law firm serving as lead counsel for more than 1,000 plaintiffs in the case, reckoned that the judges could either tell the USTR to justify the decision again or could vacate the decision and say it's contrary to the law. In other terms, she explained, they broke the law. Therefore, they could claim that the USTR violated the rights of the trade groups and did not abide by the Administrative Procedure Act, making them eligible to receive refunds for all duties. Harlan Stone, the CEO of HMTX, emphasized that since the duties are gathered by the U.S. Customs Agency when products enter the country, it is American importers, not Chinese exporters, responsible for paying these tariffs. He continued by saying that American consumers have eventually paid these taxes. According to U.S. Customs and Border Protection data, more than 150 billion U.S. dollars had been gathered over the previous four years as of September 2022. Stone claimed that HMTX alone had paid roughly $100 million in excess duties since 2018, less the amount refunded to us for a short period from November 2019 to September 2020 in which we were excluded. The imposition of tariffs, according to Stone, is bad policy because it drives up costs for both American importers and consumers, including those for building new homes and renovations in the case of his business. He claimed that China has the most cutting-edge technology for processing polyvinyl chloride, or PVC, a crucial component of vinyl flooring. Although the company has been working to lessen its dependence on China, there have been some unintended consequences of the tariffs, according to Stone. However, he added, the tariffs also included all the machinery that I needed to import from China to create the factory HMTX was building in Pennsylvania. Therefore, we believe the strategy is flawed because its objective wasn't met. On the other hand, the Biden administration sees the tariffs as a significant piece of power in negotiations with Beijing. Last year, the U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai warned lawmakers that lowering tariffs might undermine the need to make ourselves more competitive against China. Tai recently visited an optical supply plant in Chicago and was asked to lower the tariffs. She was informed by Scott Shapiro, chief executive of Europa, a business that controls the Aoiwear brand in America that while he would prefer only domestic resources, many essential components used to make frames are imported from China. Tai's visit was deemed extremely fruitful and confirmed the significance of continuing to find ways to support manufacturers in the U.S., according to a company spokesman. In response to a request for a remark on the matter, Tai's office, looking into some tariffs enacted under the Trump administration, did not provide any information. In a report, the Conservative American Action Forum, a think tank headquartered in Washington, claimed that tariffs had reduced the competitiveness of U.S. manufacturers and businesses by raising the cost of doing business and, consequently, lowering economic output and growth. However, some people favor Biden's choice to keep Trump's tariffs in place. Although he admitted that it would take a while to scale up industries or industrial ecosystems, Scott Paul, president of the Alliance of American Manufacturers, said that the duties have helped to widen supply chains and increase manufacturing employment. He said more diversified imports are coming into the United States, one of the apparent shifts in several sectors. According to data published this month by the U.S. Commerce Department, trade between the U.S. and China reached a record high of $690 billion U.S. dollars in 2022, but the U.S. also saw a rise in business with other partners. In 2022, the U.S. imported goods from 90 nations, with Mexico, Canada, and Japan leading the way. The U.S. Congress members bought by Chinese money have expressed a renewed interest in reviewing the executive's powers to allow for more excellent consultation before new trade measures are implemented as the Biden administration considers maintaining the tariffs. Congress mandated the U.S. International Trade Commission to look into the impact of Section 301 taxes on American businesses last year. Congress mandated the report is anticipated to be released shortly. Federal lawmakers may review and use the findings to influence potential legislative changes to Section 301, according to a congressional research survey released in January. Republican and Democratic legislators are now aware that too much of their constitutional authority over trade has been given to the president, according to Gary Huffbauer of the Peterson Institute for International Economics. Still, Congress cannot agree on a solution. 
he claimed that the president has considerable authority to impose trade restrictions thanks to legislation from decades ago, demonstrating the U.S. Constitution's framers' intelligence.